Alrighty then, uh, so here is, as promised, the video on render layers. Um, so this is a little tabby thing up here, um, right next to the hypershade. Um, if you click that, it'll open up your render, uh, render layer window thingy. Um, so when you come in here, um, this is like mostly, the menu down here is like what you're going to want to be looking at. This is pretty much um, your beauty pass, um, and it's just like the pretty stuff. So all your objects, all of your um, lights, all that stuff, um, that's here, and that's just like defaulted to be there. Um, these are your different like passes and stuff that you can render out. Um, so anyway, to make a new render layer, uh, we just want to go and click this little plus button. Um, and I'm going to call this one... Uh, AO, because I like ambient inclusion passes. They make your stuff very pretty. Um, so to actually add objects in this, you want to go to create collection. Um, and in this case, it's just going to have all of my objects. So for an ambient inclusion pass, I just need uh, the person and the background. And for some reason, this mesh light, uh, I'm, I'm using Redshift, which we'll see in a sec, but uh, this mesh light seems to show up randomly in my layers, so I've just been like hiding it. Um, I don't know, it seems to be like a weird thing. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to click on the objects that I want to add, click on the collection, and just do add. Um, and you'll notice that now if I go into my IPR... Um, so here's the lighting in the scene uh, without the don't panic light in the background. Uh, my students might know that I changed the light for the purposes of the internet. Anyway, um, so here, um, this is just pretty much like your uh, display layers, um, which you find under your channel box. And this is just like, do you want to look at this layer or do you not want to look at this layer? So in this case, I want to be looking at the AO layer. Um, and then this little um, uh, icon next to it is, do you want to have that render? So in this case, I don't need to worry about the master layer at all. Um, so I'm just going to get a little IPR going on this. Uh, and what I want to do is actually override the existing materials, um, like subsurface scattering and all that random crap, I want to override that with Redshift's um, ambient occlusion shader. So to do that, just right click on the collection and do create shader override. Um, go up to here, find your shader, uh, Redshift, and just click on uh, the ambient occlusion shader and you can see that everything's turned green, um, but I now have a nice ambient occlusion pass. Um, you might need to go in and like twiddle with your samples a little bit uh, if you're if your ambient occlusion looks weird in this case, like I think it looks good, but um, you can you know mess with the spread, um, all, all, all of that stuff if you want to. Um, it was a very aggressive ambient occlusion pass. <laughs> Holy crap! Um, anywho, so you can add uh, multiple AO uh, or multiple render passes. So I'm going to add another one uh, that's maybe a shadow pass. Um, uh, shadow. Um, and once again, I this one I actually need my lights for, so I'm going to select my geometry and my lights. I'm just going to leave the leave the weird light in the background off because again, that just seems to break things. So you need to make a collection um, and then add those thingies. Uh, and in this case, I want to render my shadow pass, um, so I'm going to click the little arrow icon next to that, um, and you'll see that it, it defaults everything back to the the uh, shading in the original scene um, anytime you make a new layer. Um, so this time I'm going to go to uh, Create Material Override. Uh, click on this and do uh, Matte Shadow Catcher. Um, and then once I do that, uh, you'll see that it renders this sweet black image out. Um, and there's actually information in this, you just need to click on uh, Display Alpha Channel. Um, and it renders your it, it's rendering basically your shadows in the alpha channel. Um, so to see this, you can you know throw it into Photoshop and like tweak it that way, um, or Nuke or any other program that you're using. Um, so I am just gonna go back to my uh, RGB display, um, and then the last pass that I usually add um, is actually a matte pass, uh, which just kind of makes it easy to isolate certain objects. Um, if you if you need them. So in this case I'm going to add everything kind of separately. I'll add my background as one layer. Um, so I'll do collection, background, add, um, and then I will take, I want the hair of my person separate. Hair, yay, 
Um, and then the skin of my person, which is not labeled reasonably at all. Skin. Call it flesh just to be weird, but no. Um, and eyes. And add. Okay, so this time I have four collections under each group. So what I want to do is actually go through uh, for these and add all of their... Come on, give me a nice happy eye. There we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually go through and add... Um, different overrides for each of these, um, what you call it, groupy things. And I'm actually just going to use surface shaders. Um, so I'm going to turn the background black in just sort of in arbitrary fashion. You just need to make sure that the colors aren't super, super similar to each other. Um, I usually just go through and um, uh, change the color to like green. Um, Um, and the purpose of this is if you're working in something like um, Nuke or Photoshop, you can actually go through and be like, hey, all of this green area, use, and then use that as a mask to modify you know, the colors, the shadows, whatever, of the hair or whatever is under this. Um, it's just kind of a convenient way. Like It renders really, really fast. Um, and if you do it like this, you don't need to go back and sort of re-render the hair. Um, in its own pass, you can just mask off the hair if, it's, if the modifications you want to make aren't like totally ridiculous given what the original render looks like. And the eyes pink. Well, that's terrifying. Um, but yeah, so then you have this like nice matte pass, and you can go back and pull just the skin, just the eyes, um, and modify them as needed. And you could even make. Um, I've encountered things where I want to edit so many different things. I actually have like two separate matte passes, and one I might do like certain back, like one will just be some random background objects. Um, so I'll make each of them a different color and then just sort of mask everything else out in black. Um, it's really just kind of, a, kind of a preference thing, whatever gets you the, um, the result that you need and the images that you need. Um, so the other thing that I'm just going to show you really quick is the, uh, what the heck? I'm going to make another layer and say I want to render some of the stuff without shadows. Um, so I just basically just want this to be a uh, diffuse pass with color, lighting, but no shadows. Uh, so I'm going to make a collection. Turn this off, 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 off. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to... Yeah, I have dark drawings for me. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to make an IPR, and again, this should default to the basic shading. Um, and then... So one thing you can actually do is go into... I'm going to hide this for a sec. Um, so if you click on your object um, and you go into find the shape node for the object and go down to Redshift. Um, um, if you do... Oh, all right, uh, you, there you can... So for, for Arnold, um, the default render that comes with Maya now, um, you can actually go through and select under the Arnold tab, um, cast shadows, receive shadows, etc. Um, yeah. That thing when you break Maya, I'm just like, why? Um, all right, so, okay, there we go. Um, so that was the issue. I was looking for the, I was looking for this option of create absolute override for visible layer, um, and the visible layer was not the no shadows layer. It was the scene layer. So it was like this is your default layer. You can't override your default layer. Um, so let me go back down really quick and look into the Redshift tab and see if that is fixed. No thanks. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. So in the Redshift tab, um, now when I'm selecting my face, um, I want to turn off receive shadows. So I'll do create absolute override for visible layer. Um, in this case, this is talking about the, the render layer here. Uh, you can see that it now turns it orange. And if I uncheck this, um, it should turn off shadows for the face. And that was actually probably a really bad demonstration because my face has uh, subsurface scattering on it. It's doing a bunch of weird stuff. So I'll do the ground really quick. Um, so just, I found my ground in the outliner. Uh, create default default override buttons, uh, and then just uncheck that, and then my ground should no longer receive shadows. 
and it still is receiving shadows, uh, which is weird. So my other weird hack is to usually just go in and change it in the render stats. Um, there we go. Yeah, so moral of that story is the heck with the redshift button, just change it in render stats. If you're using redshift, if you're using Arnold, these buttons actually work. Um, let me try my face again for curiosity to say. Um, Alright, yeah, so then, yeah, just basically ignore that redshift tab down there and just use the, the render stats button. Um, the downside to this is I believe that you have to go through and do this for pretty much every object, um, and you would have to do it manually, which kind of sucks, and is why I honestly usually just don't do that, because it's a huge pain in the ass. Um, so, like, I tried to do all the hair at once, and... Yeah, it only did, like, one of the hairs that I selected. Um, uh, um, but yeah, so you can turn off the stuff that way, so you pretty much have no shadows and just your lights. Um, personally, I don't usually do that, but you can do it if you want. I mostly just wanted to show you that you can uh, check off any of these and create your overrides. Um, you will notice that it'll add this horrible, just, like, giant override thing for every object when you uh when you do that so that's kind of a fun thing um but yeah render layers are super great um if you go into your render settings um you can actually change the uh you can change the the name and prefix and stuff that you want for your um passes to render out so if i if i I just got rid of whatever else I had in that box um, for the file name prefix. And if you right click in it, um, you can select different things, um, so like your render layer, um, camera, light group, etc. Um, I kind of like render layer as a thing. It just it seems to keep things kind of organized. Um, and you can even go go in and like customize that further. Um, yeah. So if you're rendering out an animation, um, you want to make sure. So Half the time, I just cheat. Like if, for like the um, the matte pass, since that's just colors, I'll render that as like a PNG. Um, for the for something like the shadow pass, where there's a bunch of alphas and all that stuff, or like an AO pass, um, sometimes I'll render that out as like an EXR, just so I have the extra data uh, if I need it for anything. Um, and programs like Photoshop and Nuke don't have any issues reading EXRs. Um, your default viewer on your computer probably won't like it too much, but that's a separate issue. Um, so yeah, so then you just want to go through, um, select your start frame and your end frame if you're rendering an animation. Otherwise, it'll just render whatever frame you're on. Um, the the by frames, if I have uh, start frame 1 and frame 100, and do by every 10 frames, that'll render the first 11th, 21st frame. Um, it's, it's convenient if you want to sort of test, do snippets of testing in your different animations. Um, renderable camera, pretty standard. Um, and then again, the, the resolution is, again, pretty standard. Um, so yeah, so if you're going to render that, um, then it will pretty much just render out all of your different, um, batches. And if you, uh, select all of these different layers in here, um, so if I wanted to render everything except maybe my shadow pass, um, you could just select all of these different buttons and it would render your no shadows, your matte, and your AO, but not the shadow pass. Um, and then same thing with, like, up here. So a lot of times I'll render my stuff be like, oops. I did a dumb thing and I need to correct it, so I'll just like add a quick matte layer and set that to be the only thing that I want rendered, and I'll just like render that out really, really quick. Um, and then add it to my thing. You don't need to go back and re-render every single thing every time you render, um, which makes these really, really powerful for going back in and like doing quick mods after you've already rendered your stuff, or before you render your stuff. If you if you plan ahead, you can um, save some render time and just do some stuff with like depth of field and stuff in post processing. But uh, yeah, render layers—they're a fun thing.